Hi guys, welcome back to the Life with Queenie page. So we're going to finish off this video with part 3 and here I'm using the Heat Bond Ultra Hold Iron On Adhesive. So what I'm doing is just pinning down the back of the couch, that seam right there. I fold it inward and then I'm just pinning it down and I'm cutting the tape to size and then just kind of shoving it in there but keeping it close to the edge so when I do apply heat it closes the edge. Here I'm just using a scrap piece of fabric and I'm using that to protect the fabric because this is suede. You do not want to directly put heat on suede. So I'm using a scrap piece of fabric to apply the heat to the backing so that it can melt and get stuck pretty much. You want the adhesive to melt completely. It's going to take a couple of tries. You do not want your iron to be on too high of a temperature or else you will damage your fabric. All right. So as you guys can see, I give it a couple of tries before it is finally closed. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the backing. I'm using small pieces at a time. Um, this is the best way to do this, I feel, because if you accidentally, you know, melt it the wrong way or, you know, it doesn't melt properly and it gets ruined or whatever, you could take that piece out and switch it out for a new piece. And make sure, remember, keep your iron on a medium heat. You do not want it too high or else you will damage your fabric. And make sure you use a scrap piece of fabric as like a barrier between the iron and the fabric on the couch you know you do not want that heat to be directly on the couch fabric okay so as you guys could see as well I'm moving down the pins a little at a time just to hold it in place for me while I slip in the tape and then go ahead and apply the heat remember I have the tape real close to the edge but not so close that where you can see it it's close to the edge to where the fabric is folded you see where my finger is it's as close as that edge but you cannot see it so once I apply the heat it melts and it bonds the two fabrics together giving me a nice seamless look so here I'm just taking off a couple of pins just to check it and make sure if I need to apply more heat, which I do. And it takes a couple of tries, but it's definitely worth it in the end. It gives you that really nice, clean, professional look. No one will ever know that you did your couch on your own. No one. I still get people who are shocked that I even did this by myself, you know. All right, so now we're just going to finish off the bottom part. And pretty much the same thing, removing the pins down, adding in a small piece, bringing it to the edge, and then applying heat. You see, I kind of measure it out. I give it a rough measure and then just kind of put it in there, pin it in place, and then, you know, apply your heat, you guys. I want to make this as simple as possible for you guys. And I want you to know that it is something that you can do. All you need is a bit of patience, okay? This took me about two to three days to do with whatever little time I had. You know, I'm a mother of three. I'm a stay-at-home mom. You know, I do YouTube for a living. And I created this new channel to kind of show you guys ways to save money, you know, while having a family. So I hope you guys really, you know, enjoy these types of videos because this is what this channel is for. All right, you guys, we're getting real close to finishing up this back of the couch. If you want, you can use the same method to kind of completely close the backing without, remember the nail that I used in part two? You do not have to use the nail, but I prefer the nail because remember, I have kids. I have kids, I have a dog, I have a cat. So that one little nail just gives me extra security. All right, so this is how the backing looks. Very seamless, looks like it came from a furniture store because if you look at the back of most furniture, this is how it looks, okay? So I hope this looked really easy for you guys and made you feel like, you know, this is something I can do, okay? Remember, patience, time, plan everything out, okay? All right, you guys, so now we're going to an easy, easy thing that you can easily do to update your couches if you don't want to do the whole thing. You can change the cushions. You can buy new cushions or you can just make covers for your cushions and use whatever fabric you like. So this is a pretty easy process. Just measure your cushion itself. What I did was measure my cushion and I added an extra inch. Here's Jack when he was younger. This, you know, this was about two months ago that I did this, you know, being all in the way. But yeah, measure your cushion and just add about an inch. 
because you need that extra space to sew. So that's what I did. And my cushion is pretty much a perfect square. So I just measured and did rough cuts. It wasn't perfect at all. But when I sew, I made sure that my lines were straight. So when I put my cushion on, it didn't look ridiculous. I'm pretty sure my fashion school teacher will see this and probably rip her hair out because I'm not following protocol and being all extra perfect. Well, you know, sometimes you don't need to be extra perfect just to get something to look perfect, right? <laughs> all right, so what I do is turn the fabrics, both of them inside out, and then just pin them together. And you can find most of these supplies in Walmart, you guys. The heat bond um, tape, I found that in Walmart. These pins, found that in Walmart. My ruler, my sewing machine, because I killed my old machine for my wedding. Oh, so, new machine. I like it. It works. It's the cheapest one they had. So I'm going to go ahead and close all of my seams, except for one side. Okay. And then I'm going to go over the stitches that I made. This is going to help make sure it's more secure, especially with kids. Don't get intimidated by sewing machines or sewing anything. It's really easy to learn how to do this. Not hard at all. If you stay with the basic stitch, you'll be fine. Don't try to do all the fancy stuff if you're not really, you know, into sewing like that. Try to stick with the basics, read the manual, look at some videos, and it will help you a lot. So now that I'm done with my cushion, I'm going to check the size. And it's pretty much perfect, so what I'm going to do is fold the part where I did not close, fold it inward, and also pin it inward. You can also do a kind of like a seamless uh, method by hand. You fold it inward, and then you stitch it by hand inward, okay? And this gives you a really nice seamless look, but I don't really care if it looks super seamless um, because these cushions will be all over the place anyways so I wanted it more secure so I'm just gonna use my sewing machine to close it up so as you guys can see I'm folding it inward and I'm just gonna stitch along that seam right there to close it up alright you guys so here is the seat cushion part I'm going to use this to cut out my pattern for the new cushion cover okay I'm just going to use this to give me my shape and the size that I need to cut to get the same size cover that the cushion already had. So I pinned down all the corners. This is another scrap piece of fabric um, from the couch. Remember I told you everything will be used, you guys. I'm not wasting any of this fabric. Even though I saved a lot of money buying it with the coupons, I'm not wasting any fabric. Okay. So just make your cuts as straight as you can. I also added about a half inch extra. You can't really see it, but I did add in a half inch extra around certain parts where the fabric was so folded in you couldn't really get the size right. But I will be stitching it in a way that it comes out straight and perfect. So these are the sides of the cushion cover. So I'm most going to use that to give me my new pieces. And I'm pin pinning those down as well. And once they're pinned down, I'm just going to start cutting and getting my patterns out of them. So that's pretty much all you need this um, extra piece for, I mean, the cushion cover for. Once you open it up, and you can use like a small razor. I use a box cutter, actually. It's safer for me. I do not like holding razors in my hands. So I use a box cutter to open up all the seams. All right, so I got one pattern there. And if you notice, I left extra on the bottom because this piece is folded inward. So I left the same amount on the bottom because we are going to be using that to finish this um, cushion cover.
And if you're not good at sewing or anything, what you can do is take your cushion cover and your fabric, bring it to a seamstress, and they can definitely make you some new cushion covers. It may cost a bit of money to do it because, you know, making cushion covers for some people is really hard, okay? But once you pin your pattern in place, it should be no problem at all, you guys. I think this is the part that may make some people feel uncomfortable about doing this, but you can always do a test before you go in and cut your fabric to do the cushion. Get a like a cheap piece of fabric, make a test cushion cover, see if you can do it, and then go for it, okay? So as you guys can see, I just cut that little, made that little cut right there. That's so, that's so that when I make my, um, when I start sewing and I turn, basically make a curve while I'm sewing, it's just easier to kind of maneuver the fabric. Because we're pretty much sewing a box. It's like a boxy shape. I didn't put any music in the video because I didn't want it to be too distracting or annoying. Okay, so I hope you guys understand that part. You sew it all the way to that part right there. Don't go all the way down. Make sure you check your cushion. All right, use your previous, your old cushion cover as a reference to where you need to stop sewing, okay, you guys? So now I'm just gonna turn it inside out just to check it. And I'm also gonna show you the outer part. I slowed down this part of the video because I wanted you to see how this cushion cover looked, okay? So like I said, we were pretty much sewing a box. So this is how it looks when you pin all the corners together and these will be that like awkward part of the cushion that goes around it kind of like it's like a little angle like a L shape that's what that part of the cushion cover is so these parts we're gonna just leave like that because that's going to be our seamless flap cover for where our zipper is going to go and I'll also do like a little shortcut with the zipper because I honestly do not like sewing on zippers. I hate it. Never liked it in fashion school. Never liked it as a child. Don't like it now. So I took a little shortcut and you guys will see it really soon. And as you guys can see, I'm just showing you all the corners. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and try on my new cushion cover. Okay, just to see if it fits, if it looks right, if I need to adjust it, if it's too big, if it's too small. You know, if it's too big, you can always take it in just a tad bit. If it's too small, you might need to start over. <laughs> and that's how it looks. Super happy with it, you guys. All right, so I also went ahead and used the cushion in the couch just to see how it looked. And then here is the shortcut on the zipper. So the zipper, the original zipper for the original cu cushion cover is fine. It's in perfect working condition, not rusty, not, not nothing. It's perfect. It's pretty much brand new, like I said. So what I'm going to do is cut out a matching piece of fabric to cover the floral fabric. I know, right? Super lazy, but I don't like putting on zippers. If I did, I would probably be making most of my clothes. <laughs> You know, I have some really cute pants in my closet. All they need are some zippers, and I refuse to do it because I hate putting on zippers. Maybe one day. One day. Like, I know how to do it. I just don't like doing it. It's not something that I enjoy doing, putting on zippers. Okay. So here, I pretty much put the fabric together and pinned it down, and we're just going to go over it. And I'm folding it inward as well to kind of give it a seamless look. So I'm pretty much covering the floral with the new suede fabric. So I figured, you know, nobody's going to really look behind my cushion to see what the zipper looks like. And if anybody got something to say, oh, well, as so long as it's covered and the zipper is closing the cushion, that's all that really matters, right? 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 You know, just saving myself some time, headache, frustration, 
dealing with a brand new zipper, having to find a zipper that even fits this cushion because this is a pretty long zipper, okay, and the same quality zipper because I didn't want to get a cheap one from Walmart. Those end up popping really quickly, all right? So, yeah, if you like the shortcut, let me know. If you don't, oh well. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you guys really appreciate this shortcut. I do. It helped me out a lot. All right, so now once I have that fabric sewn on, the new fabric sewn on to the old fabric with the zipper, I'm just going to go ahead and attach that using my pins. And this is where we're going to have that seamless cover for our zipper. You know, the end part of the zipper, you do not, you do not want that showing. It doesn't look good. So that fold-over piece, we're pretty much doing the same thing as the old cushion cover okay so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch over those three pieces pretty much and then I'll show you how it looks so you see that's the part that's folded inward and it's covering the end part of the zip which I call the butt because it is the butt nobody wants to see that that's part of our bodies that we usually cover <laughs> well some people want to see it but not a zip butt. Nobody wants to see a zip butt. You're not that cute. All right, you guys. So we're winding down for this video. It's about to be. It's about to be. It's about to be. It's about. You know what, guys? You know what I've realized? I can't say certain words. <laughs> like I listen to myself sometimes. I'm like, what? Is, what is that? What? What is she saying? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we're just going to go ahead and finish up this seat cushion. Once it's all attached and everything is ready to go, I'm pretty much just going to put the cushion back into the cover, seat cover, cushion cover, um, and zip it up like nothing. All right, I believe I have a picture of how it looks. I'll post that because some of the footage of me putting it back on the cushion is not on this card for, for whatever reason. So... I'm going to put it back on here, show you guys what it looks like, and yeah, that will be it for part three and doing this love seat couch sofa over with new fabric. I also went ahead and made some really huge comfy throw pillows with fabric that I also got from Joann's. I turned these pillowcases into like slip covers so it's easy to remove and wash and then put them back on. But that is it for this couch video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it inspired you to try this out at least once on a small chair or a small, you know, armchair or something like that. If you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe, comment, like this video, and make sure you hit the notification button so you can get a notice anytime I upload. I love you guys. Bye.